Hey guys, we're Evan and Caitlin. And today we built a walnut entryway table. Uh, and we love it! We originally designed this so it could be made 100% with dimensional lumber, meaning it wouldn't need to be ripped on the table saw or anything like that. Just picked up at the home center and cut to length. But we wanted to challenge ourselves and to be fancy and make this in walnut, so we cut everything to size on our table saw and miter saw. So we're gonna try something a little bit fancy for the legs. We're gonna try finger joints or box joints or whatever you call them. We have the height set. We have the spacing set using these fancy little spacer bars. Uh, we did one practice box. Yeah. Now time to do it on the nice stuff. Yay! It works, but the spacing wasn't exactly dead on. So they're a little bit loose, which means that these little fingers right here aren't as wide as I want them to be. They should be about a half inch to fit into the half inch holes that we're cutting. But thankfully we were using scraps for these test cuts. So we're gonna reset it up and try it again. I have the spacing all dialed in and now it's time to cut the final pieces. Setting up the finger joining jig it took a little bit of practice, but once it was all going, it was pretty fast. And now we have a bunch of finger joints to assemble. It's nice. It's nice. It's nice. Snug fit. Yeah. Yes. Oh. That's cool. That's a leg. I love the gradient. That was on purpose. Actually, okay. Is this a good time to talk about it? Yes. We're not wood experts. I don't know if having this light color in your walnut is a desired thing, but we have this place where the leg meets the tabletop. So we actually wanted the lighter walnut up at the top so that it'll contrast with the darker walnut of the tabletop. Now we just need to make one more of these. And then all the other things. <laughs> really good. What is that? Oh, that's blue. That's paper towel. <laughs> <laughs> so both of our legs are glued up and next step is sanding off the overhang in these finger joints so that we can attach these to the underside of our tabletop. They're glued to our tabletop and we've measured and cut their apron, the side pieces. Now we just need to attach them using pocket holes. Why yes, we are using pocket holes and traditional joinery on this table. If this makes you feel feelings like, yeah, we should all give pocket holes a chance, or if you're gonna build it, why not build it right? Then you're in luck because we built a website using Wix called makersvote.com where you can go vote and buy t-shirts to tell the world if you're team pocket hole or team joinery. Wix is a free website building platform that lets you build professional, customizable websites using drag and drop tools. If you want a website where you can share tutorials, sell products, or get people to vote and buy t-shirts about pocket holes, Wix has hundreds of templates, unlimited pages, and reliable hosting, all for free. Creating our site was super intuitive, and we were able to quickly integrate a poll feature and products from our store. Click the link in our description below, or go to wix.com slash go slash Evan and Caitlin to get started on your website today. Wix.com slash go slash Evan and Caitlin. <laughs> I don't think that, that makes it louder. <laughs> Now 
we just need to cut some notches right here and over there to bring this flush with the top panel. I'm just gonna trace our material. If we cut this out, it should be the same size. It should fit right here. So I'm not gonna go all the way to the corner with either of these cuts. I'm gonna stop almost all the way there and finish it with a file. If you're using your file, make sure you know which side is your safe edge so that while you're filing this way, not also filing that way. So I went ahead and assembled the table a little bit and Caitlin hasn't seen it. So I'm gonna go get her and show her how it looks. Oh my gosh, it looks like a table now. It looks really good. It's like the right heft now, you know, yeah. it's beefy enough now. So now we just have to add a, a few more pocket holes and then it's time to finish it. To be safe, we're also putting some glue here so that these two faces will hold on to each other. Pocket screws are just more for reinforcement. Now we have to fill in a few little gaps with wood putty. This is a walnut specific wood putty. We used it when we were with Johnny Brook in his shop and liked it a lot, so we're gonna use it again today. And now it's time for everyone's favorite part, finishing. I mean, that's kind of what we've been doing. Applying the finish. Hope you guys liked this episode. This was so much fun for us to build. The same design could be used like a desk if you just stretch it out or it could be a bench if you shrunk it down. This is a really versatile design and we're gonna have plans linked below to make one yourself. <laughs> I know we kind of played up the whole pocket holes, joinery thing, but we really do think both are good. Both have uses where they make sense. We're really glad that we went with box joints on the joints that were visible. And we're glad we did pocket holes for the stuff that's hidden. If you like this video and you want to support us making more, you can head over to shopevanandcaitlin.com for shirts like these and other things, or- Or makersvote.com. Or makersvote, If you want yeah. these specific shirts, makersvote.com. Yeah. You can also head over to patreon.com slash evanandcaitlin to get exclusive behind the scenes videos and updates and sneak peeks. And our peeks. after show. And our after show. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> Are you okay? Oh, God. <laughs> What's happening? Ladies. <laughs> tape. Tape. Measuring tape. You're like zen gardening right now. So how does using pocket holes on walnut make you feel? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> I can do this. That smells good. It does smell good. <laughs> 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 oh, God.